Some Words with a Mummy by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Greg Marguerite. Some Words with a Mummy by Edgar Allan Poe. The symposium of the preceding evening had been a little too much for my nerves. I had a wretched headache and was desperately drowsy. Instead of going out, therefore, to spend the evening as I had proposed, it occurred to me that I could not do a wiser thing than just eat a mouthful of supper and go immediately to bed. A light supper, of course. I am exceedingly fond of Welsh rabbit. More than a pound at once, however, may not at all times be advisable. Still, there can be no material objection to two, and really between two and three there is merely a single unit of difference. I ventured perhaps upon four. My wife will have it five, but clearly she has confounded two very distinct affairs. The abstract number five I am willing to admit, but concretely it has reference to bottles of brown stout, without which, in the way of condiment, Welsh rabbit is to be eschewed. Having thus concluded a frugal meal and donned my nightcap with the serene hope of enjoying it till noon the next day, I placed my head upon the pillow, and through the aid of a capital conscience fell into a profound slumber forthwith. But when were the hopes of humanity fulfilled? I could not have completed my third snore when there came a furious ringing at the street doorbell and then an impatient thumping at the knocker, which awakened me at once. In a minute afterward, and while I was still rubbing my eyes, my wife thrust in my face a note from my old friend Dr. Poniner. It ran thus. Come to me, by all means, my dear good friend, as soon as you receive this. Come and help us rejoice. At last, by long-preserving diplomacy, I have gained the assent of the directors of the City Museum to my examination of the mummy. You know the one I mean. I have permission to unswath it and open it, if desirable. A few friends only will be present, you, of course. The mummy is now at my house, and we shall begin to unroll it at eleven to-night. Yours ever, Poniner. By the time I had reached the Poniner, it struck me that I was as wide awake as a man need be. I leaped out of bed in an ecstasy, overthrowing all in my way, dressed myself with a rapidity truly marvelous, and set off at the top of my speed for the doctors. There I found a very eager company assembled. They had been awaiting me with much impatience. The mummy was extended upon the dining-table, and the moment I entered its examination was commenced. It was one of a pair brought several years previously by Captain Arthur Sabertash. Sample complete. Ready to continue?